Bell Court at 7.44 p.m. And thank you all for accommodating this late meeting time. And I apologize for last week's mess up. Um, first item on the agenda is approving the minutes of September 23rd, 27th. Isn't it public comment? Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Public comment is first on the agenda. So. Hi. Hello. Are you here to make public comment? I am, but I, I guess I thought maybe I'm remembering this incorrectly that if a particular subject comes up that I want to speak to, I can speak then. I mean, I'm not really like prepared with a comment and I'm not certain of what's coming up. I think I know it's coming up that I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. We take comments at the uh, beginning. Of, we take comments at the beginning of the meeting. Okay. Uh, and it's not a dialogue, but we, so we take you what you have to say and, and drip into the minutes. Okay, okay and then I, I wanted to, I'm here to talk about surveillance okay. cameras in the city. Okay. So, Can and I think that's name? coming up on the agenda. So, uh, will I not be able to interact with you then? Right. right. Oh, so it's changed then. Different committees do it differently. No, but the Human Rights Commission, I've, I've come to several meetings and it wasn't like that. But, okay. So, I need to say something now then. Yes. Well, <clears throat> um, I'm not prepared to do this, but I'll do the best I can. So, I don't know if everybody's been following the issue of, of police surveillance coming to town. Um, and I'm very much opposed to that. And um, Elisa had mentioned that it would be brought up tonight. Um, and I'm just very hopeful that the Human Rights Commission would make a statement. And I think the, w the way it's set up is that there's a city council resolution um, and ordinance. Um, and so I think it could be, I think if you wanted to make a statement, it could be a, a, you know, positive, uh, framed in a very positive way because you know, if what's needed is not a negative statement against something, but rather um, a statement in favor of the city council resolution and ordinance to stop surveillance. And um, I've been, there have been numerous forums and city meetings and subcommittee meetings. I've been to all of them and I, I'd say 90 to 99 percent of the people there have been opposed to surveillance. Um, I've spoken to business owners, several of them are opposed to it. Um, it, just, it just seems to me that many people throughout the city are opposed to it and um, the mayor I understand is in favor of it. I, I think it's the wrong thing for our city, especially at this time given the atmosphere um, of our encroaching, you know, loss of civil, what I would call civil liberties and human rights. Um, there's been some, some banter back and forth about whether citizens have a legal right to privacy. Um, you know, that's one discussion. Another discussion is, is just our human right to some kind of privacy. And um, in the course of the discussion, I've also found out that all of the gatherings, including many protests, have been videotaped. And so that raises issues of um, the Fourth Amendment and people's right to assemble peacefully. And I, uh, I would say that it's not peaceful if you're being videotaped. People have concerns about the fact that the videotapes um, might well be accessible to the FBI, to ICE, and at a time when there are increasing <coughs> deportations, many people, including the police chief, who said it's a problem, um, that there's, there's no sure way to keep ICE or the FBI from getting the videotapes. And that, that's, of course, a human rights issue, as I see it. So anyway, I'm hopeful, I'm really hopeful that you all could make some kind of statement 
make it be known that you're in favor of the resolution to stop it. <coughs> Tomorrow night is the second reading, meaning the final vote on the resolution, and then comes the ordinance, which is binding. So I hope you'll participate in the discussion and, and come out in favor of that. Thank you. Can I have your name, please? Amy, Amy. Bookbinder. Thank you. Um, I don't have a printed copy of the agenda tonight, but our plan is to, to spend the first part of our meeting on our uh, civility pledge campaign that we're working on and the um, the discussion of the surveillance cameras is scheduled to come up in our last half hour. Okay, thank you. I, I don't know if I have a right to ask this because I'm not, I'm in the audience, but I'm very hard of hearing, so you, I would appreciate it. Sure. That's fair. Thank you. Maybe I'll sit a little closer so I can hear better. Sure. Okay. I apologize about that. Um, now we will turn to accepting minutes of September's meeting. Second. Thank you. Second? Second. Thank you. Any uh, discussion? Changes? I think, I think we ended at 6.59, though. You did correct that scripture's error and we will adjust it. Um, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Uh, I have copies of um, a draft. This is just a draft. Of the um, proposed op-ed for the Daily Hampshire Gazette, which I drafted and Lori uh, took a second look at. And also we talked about having um, Yes. Frequently asked questions. And this one has um, is also in draft form and has Lori's notes on top of it. So it's clear it's not a it's not ready for prime time yet, but there it is. Lori, do you remember how many words a gazette of that piece is? Yeah, this is within the okay. within the bounds. Okay. Great. It could even be longer. Oh, okay. okay. Right. So I'll give folks a second to read the uh, op ed piece first, and we'll start with that.
I don't want to necessarily open this up to a line by line edit. I don't think that's the best use of our time. Uh, but overall impressions, um, is there something in here that requires more conversation before we are okay with that? I could see um, critiques or people feeling there's the one line the first time I read it, uh, when you first sent it, I think I think it's, it feels a bit better this time reading it around. I have more of a problem with just a couple words in the sentence, but the um, second paragraph that says, while we believe that in general Northampton has fared better than some American communities, we have our, we've had our ugly incidents and we acknowledge there's room for improvement. The first time I read it, um, I'll talk more about now how I actually feel the second time reading it around. I think the ugly incidents part for me feels that it's a bit minimalizing uh, some of the situations that have occurred in Northampton. I know as a person, I'm white passing, but as soon as people find out I'm Arab, I've experienced a lot of racism, microaggressions, systemic, um, many different incidents growing up in Northampton, so I can only imagine somebody who is not white passing, what they've experienced. Um, also, somebody of low socioeconomic status, I've definitely seen a lot of, um, you know, falling out and things like that uh, systemically and within the school systems and various other areas. So for me, it just felt like it was too, it felt like it was trivializing what people have gone through. So I think at first I kind of had an issue with the sentence as a whole, but I think mainly it's just the ugly incidents. I feel like it could be worded a bit differently. I see that. I, um, I will just kind of support what Nerala is saying about that. I agree that it sounds a little bit minimizing. Um, and I imagine there was discussion about this and it was a strategic decision, but I have a problem with quoting um, George W. Bush as one of the, <laughs> as the main person that we're quoting kind of from that level of government, I think that he was responsible for launching wars that are still going on and just aggression extraordinaire. And so to have him be the person who's talking, um, you know, in, in this piece just doesn't feel good to me. But uh, I can understand why strategically you might feel compelled to choose him, but I, I don't feel comfortable with it. Um, so that, that was kind of my main thing when I read it the last time. I haven't finished reading it through this time. Um, <clears throat> can I suggest that to give it more weight, to say that instead of we've had our ugly mm -hmm. incident, that, uh, you know, I guess what he's, it depends on where you're standing to say that if you live in Northampton, you've fared better than other communities. Uh, depends on if you are living in Northampton. Um, that uh, we have a tremendous amount of work to do in our own community is really, you know, taking ownership of it. Uh, and it's more of what our, our intent is, which is that we're trying to get citizen involvement. So for me, the message that we're trying to send is that we have worked to to do together as a community. Um, and that may not sound uh, as weighted as we need. Mm -hmm. You know, we might need to still uh, work for that. But I think it's hard because we don't have empirical data. We can't say that there's been a rise or, or, or something um, like that. And I'm not sure what the point is that while we believe in general Northampton has fared better than some American communities. I mean, it's giving us a pat on the back and acknowledging that we're open to some communities, but not necessarily all. You know, like if you're a lesbian living in Northampton, I've fared a little better than maybe other communities. But if I'm a black lesbian living in Northampton, it might be exactly the same as other communities. I wonder, I mean, I hear what you're saying about, about not wanting really to quote President Bush. Um, for one thing, is there anybody else who says something similar enough that sort of fits either would fit in? I mean, the other thing we can do is just skip that bit. 
I also was reminded, um, listening to you, Chris, that there was another piece that felt a little um, off to me in terms of the impact of it, which was um, saying coarse language, because I think what I'm really concerned about is, you know, racism and and the f it's not, you know, coarse language sounds more like somebody saying, you know, F you or something like that. It's which clearly isn't civil, but I think that we need to concern ourselves more with really overt um, expressions of hatred. And so coarse language also feels kind of minimizing to me. Although I'll remind you, as my colleague just reminded you, microaggressions are just as painful as big coarse language. So big and small. Absolutely. I just, I, I've talked to a few um, people who live in Northampton, people of color, who, uh, about this, that this is what the Human Rights Commission was working on, and um, across the board they were kind of like, civility is one thing and it's important, but you know, we're dealing with um, outright racism and outright classism. And so civility just felt to them like, is that really what we should be talking about? We should be talking very explicitly about things like racism and classism and um, just aggression towards poor people, um, illicit drug users. Um, so kind of just to get more to the heart of what we're really concerned about. Well, you used the word explicit. You want this to be more explicit. And a little bit more hard hitting, I guess. Would, you know, that's I my suppose personal that bias. the intent was to invite people to join us, so it was maybe the intent was to be warm. Mm -hmm. and do we still feel that the, the, the title, um, the culture of civility campaign, is a reasonable one, or should we use something more just for that? It's funny that you say that because. When I was reading this in the FAQ, I was thinking, why didn't we call it the dignity, culture of dignity? <laughs> because it's a little bit more like, like civility to me implies like, let's all be polite, and dignity means like, let's treat each other with respect. Unfortunately, we already, we already had that on our resolution. So I don't know if we can change it, but dignity feels a little bit more needy than civility. And, um, Treating someone with dignity means that you are inherently valuing them. Yes, right. Oh, it's much worse than going line by line. It's going concept <laughs> by concept. Karen, so sorry. This is how this is how local government works. <laughs> wow. Because this is very, it's such difficult stuff yeah. to get to bring the most number of people along, mm -hmm. and yet to treat this as serious as it needs to be treated. Yeah. And to be fearless. Let, you know, what, what we're saying is let's be a little more fearless in this. Let's be a little more explicit. Um, and the use of George W. Bush is incredibly uh, awkward and perhaps inappropriate right now in, in this time. <laughs> so he looks like a peer of decency. <laughs> Hmm. I think that's how people get away with it. I'm wondering, do you, does it feel like because the resolution um, that's already been passed and whatever, um, that we can't kind of rebrand the campaign? I don't know. I was wondering that. I, I think we could do it. Yeah. Well, I like dignity better than civility. I mean, we could keep the resolution the same and just call it the campaign of dignity. Kind of goes more along with um, the International mm -hmm. Declaration of Human Rights Day, too. The inherent dignity of all yeah. members of the human family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think what you said, too, Lori, is really true that civility sounds more like politeness, mm -hmm. and that's, that isn't right. kind of explicit and hard to do, I think we should. Right. And that's not you know, the genesis of where this came from. Yes, right. 
Yeah, that's true. Because I mean, the the resolution itself names off you know racism and all of that. Right. So right. why not you know make that explicit? Well, the thing is, we this letter, I think, I mean the the resolution does name it all. I mean, this letter is just kind of inviting people to take part, really, on December tenth. But I wonder if there's an easy fix to this ugly incidents um, because. We've had our, um, what is it that we're trying to say? We've had our, our unstruggles. We have our unstruggles. Not we've had, but we're we have. have. Yes. So if we just take out the George Bush sentence, so we get to, well, it's, it's going to start before that because it's, you, can, you don't need any more, of course. Line by line, Karen. It's been widely <laughs> reported that our public discourse has become less civil, period. Cruel and more. Not just less civil, yes. period. And then you're getting rid of George Bush. You could say. Well, we could go right, why is this necessary? It's been widely reported, and then go right to in July. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, that kind of would work without all that. And this, this might we don't like feel going. comfortable talking about hate speech or anything like that. Like, it's been widely reported that. Because again, our public discourse has become less civil. So it's like you're an asshole is like not civil, but we're talking, yeah, you know, about right. incidents of like mm -hmm. hate speech. Mm -hmm. Yes, we, we heard from members of this commission about how they've right. been targeted very it's explicitly. What we're saying is that hate has become normalized oh, in yes. the last um, eleven months. How about we say it like that? Well, it's been widely reported that hate has become normalized in public discourse. Or expressions of hate, maybe. Hate and or hateful expressions, or I don't know, that maybe is new. I mean, I think if we lived in Charlottesville, we would be using some strong language. Yes. So we can say. And that's where um, Northampton has fared better. Yes, there's a continuum. Right, right, right. Yes. With the intention well, of that. Yeah. I, un I understood and. Um, Thinking about the reader. Yeah. yeah. What if we said it's been widely reported that acts of hate and expressions of hate have become more normal, have become normalized in the public domain. domain. Do yeah, uh, uh, in the public um, what's the word? space. In public, in public space. Yeah. And then pretty much the rest of it is really um, pulling on from the from the resolution, which we should all agree on because we all mm -hmm. agreed on it. <laughs> Perfect. So when is the, when would this be uh, slated to go in the paper? And if so, we need to be ready with our. Do we need to have our uh, details in order for December tenth before we publish that we're yes. having it on December tenth? Well, I think we should go over the FAQ. Mm -hmm. Before we okay. make, uh, I mean, if, if we're if we're done with that, okay. can you just read the sentence one more time? Yeah. Why is this necessary? It's been widely reported that our public discourse. No. Well, this is how I said it yeah. before. But why is this necessary? It's been widely reported that acts of hate and expressions of hate have become normalized in our public spaces, or in the public space, in the public sphere. As many ways you could say that. <coughs> Have become, have become increasingly normalized. Yeah, you sure? Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So the phrase is acts of hate and expressions of hate. Does that address your concern, Nora? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. okay. Perfect. I don't think this changes. And you want to know when it would go in the paper, but I I want to know: Are we about to talk about the details of the lunch on December 10th? That will yes, we will be talking about that. I was going to go through the documents first, and then um, work on a timeline, and I'll report back on what I've learned from the mayor's office since last night. Okay, great. 
I think that piece, the one bit that I liked is improvement takes intention and practice. I don't know if there's anywhere. Where is that? It's at the bottom of the third paragraph, and it's part of what we're cutting out. <coughs> but it oh, oh, we're back. Oh, I'm we're back to this. Sorry. Yes. I Sorry. Okay. I, yeah, I think that uh, maybe after that amended sentence, we can say uh, something about wanting to um, we acknowledge that there's improvement, 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 improvement in our own community. Right. Oh yeah, I think you're right. I think we shouldn't lose that improvement takes intention and practice. That's important. Yeah, so we just say, we yeah. acknowledge that there is room for improvement in our, in our own community. Improvement takes intention and practice. How about a lot of room for improvement? Yeah. Is that right? I know, this is what you didn't want to do. Yes. <laughs> what about, um, I mean, it's only one bad paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I think it's really good, but oh, um, yes. I'm just wondering from the third paragraph, after improvement takes intention and practice, if we could <coughs> emphasize the community part of it and like supporting each other or, because we're also on kind of kind of calling people, calling on people to be bystanders and support people who are targeted. So just to bring in the community piece in that sentence? Well, it, it says it down here. We think this is not too much to expect from each other, and we hope you'll agree. So I think down there we're kind of inviting people to join us in the community. Um, Karen, can we put, it, is the resolution on the human rights uh, page? Website? Yeah. Can we put it there? Yeah. I'm wondering if we can, in this letter, have a link to it. Oh, of um, course. Okay, because. That would be great. Yeah. Maybe a link to the resolution and the pledge. I hate to do this, but that last sentence on the page, it's about learning to disagree without humanizing and assuming the best intentions of our neighbors. Mm -hmm. That bit about assuming the best intentions of our neighbors. Yeah, I know. Maybe it's all right. Well, I know what you mean. I mean, I don't, I don't know what you mean, but I think I know I have a little problem with it, which is that it, it feels a little bit like um, if you're being, if you're the one that's being oppressed. It's not an even playing field. Yeah, and you, like you're being asked to assume the best intentions. It's just like, oh, fuck that shit. <laughs> so it seems to me we just skip that last one. Yeah. Or you could say, be in different, this isn't the right thing, but be in different camps with respect for one another's or something like Learning that. to disagree respectfully. Well, well see, I think learning to disagree again, without yeah, dehumanizing says it. Yeah. yeah. That says it very succinctly. The person you're talking to. Yeah. Without dehumanizing the person you're talking to. Mm -hmm. oh, so should we put Oh, that? so it's about learning to disagree without dehumanizing another person. I mean, you, the way the that, I mean, group in the you process. Could, but you could say that it's about learning to disagree without humanizing, dehumanizing, period. The rest is implied, you know? Because so it's, it's without de dehumanizing anybody. Right. Well, if you're, right, right. the concept of dehumanizing. I mean, I don't think you need to add the clause there. Okay. Thank you. I think next time you need to say, I'd like to go through this line by line, and then we'll say no. <laughs> There's nothing to cut. <laughs> this is, you know. It's just brainstorming. It's a good thing. This is the work of the committee. This is yep. how collaboration works. Yeah. All right. Any going once, going twice? <laughs> so. Okay. I will make those. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This may look a little choppier. There's, you'll see my draft and Lori's um, suggestions in the italic. And to just remind folks, we 
uh, anticipated that we may get pushback from um, various members of the community, and we're trying to make sure we know how uh, what our answer is to those mm -hmm. ones that we can anticipate mm -hmm. from the FAQ. Yes. Yeah. So, can we just explain that you, you know we did this together in the sense that Karen had some. FAQs, mm -hmm. and then she sent it to me, and I thought we should add some FAQs, and I thought we should get a little more basic, and so so I did the the what, why, who, how. So that's how that's how that went. Every the journalist. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I think that I I am imagining someone's going to get this who's never heard of this before. I mean, a yes, lot of people sure. don't. Mm -hmm. right, right. So I just felt like it had to stand on its own. The second question, why do you refer to the civility pledge? Mm -hmm. The personal bias, I find optic and irritating work coming off the angry. Is that right? Yes, yes, that's fine. As long as you acknowledge that part of it. So right there in that same place, um, again, there's name calling, which could be like poopy head, like you say, it's name calling when like five-year-olds do it. But again, I wonder if we could come up with language that's more about hateful speech or, and actions or well it says name like calling that. and actions that target people for who they are to me that's the point but but the name calling they, to me just it feels like a what about one hateful of those minimizing mm -hmm. words hate hateful name calling denigrating how about openly racist sexist <laughs> comment because I think then we have to say homophobic. I mean, we can't just say racist and sexist. But it's and more than name calling is the thing. It's, I don't think, because, you know, like when um, we hear that people are like, go back to your own country, da, da, that's not exactly name calling. There, there's more, you know, hate mm -hmm. is expressed in mm -hmm. all these different ways besides just saying, you know, calling someone mm -hmm. a sick or whatever. You know? And the, and the more narrow we define what it is that we're talking about, the more we leave out microaggressions that mm -hmm. are also part of the system of experiences of people. Mm -hmm. So there's, I'm mindful of the, um, the hashtag MeToo campaign of recent weeks, I guess, um, that asked women to use the hashtag MeToo if they were never harassed or assaulted. So there was a whole range of range of things. Harassment could very well be name calling. But what if we changed it to too? see their experiences in there? What if we said an increase in hate speech and actions that target people for who they are? Hate speech is yeah. pretty su serious and it's uh, in it encompasses all of it. So we don't have to get specific which You could say microaggressions, hate speech and actions are hate speech, microaggressions and actions. Microaggressions and actions that, I don't, I don't think we should do the microaggressions in this. Okay. Yeah. But you're not everybody. Yeah. 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 I mean, and what we're talking about is you should be able to walk down the street. I mean, microaggressions is going to be like a culture change that needs to happen, but I don't. I can't help with this. In response to uh, an, an increase in actions that target people for who they are based on their, then you just do race, religion, you know, you can do those categories. And we can pretty much cover everybody because uh, people are attacked based on their race, religion, ability. Um, or you can just say based on characteristics of who they are. Characteristics is a word that some people, like a black person, would say yeah, it's my good. characteristic that I'm black. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's a problematic word. I think. But I get where you're going with it, and I like that idea. That one word goes a little. Well, we get to scratch out uptick and name calling. So in response what to an mean? increase in actions that target people for who they are. But it's not just actions; it's words too. So, I think we, we should have the word hateful in actions. Because 
I think hate, what you said before, an increase in hate speech and actions that target people for who they are is adequate. Hate speech yeah. and actions that target people for who they are. I will just note that if I were the reader and I saw that there's been an increase in hate speech, I could say that's not me. When I know that I have had, I, I have, I have culpability in this as well, but I wouldn't be able to see myself in here. So yeah. the pledge is um, me because yes, I don't yes, you will because this is about. Why are we are asking, promoting this? No, this is about asking for people, like not just a term. Maybe you didn't do it, but did you walk away when you saw it happen to somebody else? So it's not necessarily, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we all have culpability because we have to call it when we see it. Yeah, it's in response and, to And that people. is addressed in that question. Okay. And I will note it's that, a, oh, I have made a note to myself to change the language from civility to dignity. So what Because we are saying a community norms campaign that upholds the expectation that we can treat each other with dignity no matter our differences. Mm -hmm. Community norms campaign is a little bit of a wonky language, like people that work in certain fields might understand that concept, but I'm not sure it's a mm -hmm. broadly understood term. What about just a community campaign? Sure. Yes, and otherwise that is a beautiful sentence. <laughs> <laughs> it answers the question, why are people promoting the civility pledge? In response to an increase in hate speech and actions that target people for who they are, and based on the belief that the responsibility for addressing that problem falls on all of us, we are asking people to join in a community campaign that upholds the expectation that we can treat one another with dignity no matter our differences. So just skip norms. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> That's my point. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would it be helpful if we read it out loud? I think you just did. No, I mean going on, the rest of them. She did read it out loud. Oh. I mean, I don't know. Have you, has everybody read it all? No, we just got it. No, no, no. <laughs> well, I couldn't remember if there was time to read it, and now we're going point by point. We're just done the talking now. <laughs> okay. Well, then also, I read it before, and it's not like I get here and talk to you all. But yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah, see. Oh, so much. It says, among elected leaders, I. So the, next, so the next paragraph, who is promoting the civility pledge? Everybody's just happy with that. We can go on to the next one. Just as leaders with an A. How does the campaign work? And what is the timeline? Mm about the question, isn't this some kind of forced conformity? It's almost like planting an idea in people's heads that doesn't need to be there. I think there might be a better way of, you know, addressing people's concerns without giving them the idea of what they should be suspicious about. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Well, why don't you just say, why should I sign? Can, yes. Just yes. take away the second mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. I think businesses, and the third line down from the top businesses should be plural. Third line down from the yes. Yes. Yeah. So are you saying isn't this some kind of false conformity? Let's skip that. We're yeah, take that one. Take that one. Yeah. Well, it's a little awkward. I'm, I don't even like doing this, but as I read this out loud, why should I sign a civility pledge? We signed the pledge as a symbol to all of our neighbors that we are committed to respect their human dignity and rights in Northampton. You mean human dignity and human rights? Sure. I'm asking. Yes. Yeah. Each of us will have different ways in which we interpret our responsibility and under this pledge. Sorry, yes. I think we should get rid of there. We signed the pledge as a symbol to all our neighbors that we are committed to respect human dignity mm -hmm. and, yes. and human yes. rights. Yeah. Yeah. 
So it sounds a little less teachy, preachy. Maybe we could say we are signing the pledge as opposed to we sign the pledge. I don't know, for some reason. It's like we sign the pledge. That's how it feels to me. Yes, yes, yes I like that. Like we are signing. Yeah, I like that better. And then Karen, how about the last sentence? You will find your own way to practice civility. What if what if we change that to you will find your own way to interact with dignity? I would just get rid of it. Oh, get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think so. Yeah, it's not yoga. Love this sentence. Like all rights, we believe that they are best exercised with accountability. I think that's a brilliant line. Appreciate that. Which line? Um, we believe that they are best exercised with accountability. Like all rights. Mm -hmm. um, I almost think we can get rid of the will, will there be any enforcement because I kind of think it's self evident there's not going to be. Right. Any. And enforcement is not a word that fits well. Yes. Um, well, kind of similarly, I think, the one before that, what about free speech? Instead of saying we are not in the business of policing your speech, I, I actually think a passive voice would be better there, like um, this is not about policing your speech. Or we could just get rid of that sentence. I would get rid of that sentence. Because it goes, best exercise with accountability, we invite you to be thoughtful, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And then it the seems that, yeah. less is more there. Because huh? yeah. again, it's like plants that idea to yeah. Like, yeah. Yes. I would also, that policing? I'd right. say take away the second half of the sentence if we don't want to be preachy. We invite you to be more thoughtful about the impact of your words, period. Why more? Because it implies you already have been, mm -hmm. and there people have mm -hmm. been. And, and get, you know, get rid of and choose them carefully? Yeah, uh, that's the key part. Um, what about including some of that, the, the next sentence about um, being mindful of how words shape community spaces? Oh, actually, yeah, why, yeah. Don't, we, why don't we, why don't you, why don't we bring those right sentences out? Yeah. And that can we just. How about we invite you to be thoughtful and mindful of how your words shape community spaces. Yes. Yes. You like it better. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, actually, to be aware. To be we're gospel and people. mindful. To be aware. We invite you to be. Oh, oh to be aware. We oh, ask yes. you. Invite ask you to be aware of the impact of your words. I mean, I think that. No, to be to be aware and mindful of how your words shape community spaces. You'll figure it out, and I'll preach. I'll, I'll approve. Okay. <laughs> you get the point. I, I think I get the sense of the committee, yes. Along the lines of not planting negative <laughs> the tax mm -hmm. money. Yes. <laughs> That's what yes. I was just thinking about. I, I just wonder, we've, we've talked about how words shape community spaces, mm -hmm. but I just don't know if there's any way to put how words can wound or, mm -hmm. I don't know, wound, hurt, where? Well, I just asked her to take that out. We invite you to be thoughtful about the impact of your words. I didn't like that sentence, but they doomed. I mean, you think we don't have to put it? I have an idea. We invite, can I try it? Yeah. We invite you to be aware of how words shape community spaces and mindful of their power to wound. A little too awkward, but an esoteric. Maybe it's late at night for me, but that was a long, odd sentence. Well, I was just combining the two ideas, but okay. we invite you to be, it seems and we encourage, we're not inviting, like it's a weird, it's a weird concept. Who are we? We're inviting people to be more thoughtful with their words. It, like it reminds me of a Broadway musical. Like we invite you. But I, I would like to 
say that the words hurt. I mean, it's not only about the quality of community space. Words wound. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I would have thought that could be something. Okay, so how about this then? I'm trying another one. We encourage you to be aware of how words can wound and mindful of how words shape community space. What about together we will blah, 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 instead of inviting or encouraging? Together we can make a difference in, in our community spaces if we're more mindful and careful with our words, something like that, it's more positive. Together we will work at being more thoughtful and mindful or whatever. The but this is under the free speech I guess. Era. I guess I just think that's a little presumptuous. It's like, how can we say together we'll do this? We're just asking people to join. It seems a little more humble mm -hmm. to be asking than, to, than telling. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. I would prefer encourage over invite, though, I have to say. Mm -hmm. Or we could just say, words can wound, period, and then say, we encourage you to be mindful of how words yes. shape community space. That's very simple. Yes, you got very it. Simple. You got yeah. it. Words can wound, period. Yeah. And that connects with what about free speech? Mm -hmm. yeah, Did you get that? Yeah, I got it. This. Isn't this just a feel good? I knew that's what you were laughing about. <laughs> I knew it. I like it. It's great. So we can take out the taxpayer question. We all know that that's, we have the same response to that. Oh, oh it's no, going to no. be like a tiny little group of people that's going to be like, oh, yes. Yes. this is my tax dollar. You're going to is that so what you're spending my taxpayer money on? Do people think take that out? I didn't think we should take it out. Who said that? No, I like it. I was just concerned about that concept of like planting ideas. But, but we have a good heads. point to make about it. We're not spending your tax dollars on it. Not, not, not it's not an issue. So anything. I, I think that it, you know, in stormwater drain city, we should say it. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the winter, the Human Rights Commission will go out and personally fill your potholes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll talk nicely to your neighbors. That's what, that's what we'll do. <laughs> Having an Are argument with a neighbor? Potholes. Call us. Oh my gosh, you got citrus. All right, I want to see if we can get through this in the next okay. little bit of time. Yes, we are running out of time to talk okay. about the other piece. Okay, well, if we're changing it from civility to dignity, mm -hmm. maybe we get rid of the last one. Yes. Get rid of the whole question. Yeah. Everybody okay with that? Yep. Yes. So what's Are the idea of this? We're actually like gonna be handing it out? Um, yeah. This will be uh, posted with other materials related to the campaign and can it be put on the website? Yeah, and it's uh, also a tool for all of us to be sure that we are prepared to respond when we have feedback. Mm -hmm. And if we, you know, leave them in public spaces where the where the document is available to sign. Um, uh, can I just look at the last sentence of the last FAQ that says we have a choice every time we open our mouths to speak. We can choose words that lift up our neighbor's humanity and we can choose words that denigrate. We hope to choose the former more than the latter. Would would that be would we would that fit in that what about free speech? Oh yeah, I like that. I thought that same thing. Yes, I think that's good. It could just be a closing sure. sentence too. It doesn't have to be a FAQ answer, does it? True. That's true. Could be the beginning something. Yeah, it's nice. But it's a good kicker ending. Okay. There it shall be then. Okay. Nice job, you guys. Yes. Well, nice job, everybody. everybody. Takes the village mm -hmm. to write a FAQ. <laughs> I'm pulling up my email that I got from 
City Hall. Okay. So I did ask some questions of the mayor's office. Um, the mayor is comfortable with us going ahead and contacting <coughs> Smith College um, and the interfaith folks. Booker's not here, but Davina, did you were you the Smith College? Yeah, I certainly can. Okay. Um, so Smith College, as in both the rate, the presence office and school for social work. Yes, we can do that. Okay. It might also be a good idea to contact the Jandon Center for Community Engagement because they're really working hard to have more ties with Northampton. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. What is that? The Jandon? The Jandon Center for Community Engagement. It used to just be called the Center for Community Engagement. That's its new name. And um, Dennis Candy is the director. He's a really nice person and I bet he would be really interested in and it's called, how do you spell the second gen? Jan, J-A-N-D-O-N. Center for Community Engagement. It's just dcandy at smith.edu. And it's like, like the candy Halloween. that you eat. Except his first name is D-E-N-Y-S, strangely. He's Irish. And their Office of Religious Affairs, Matilda Cantwell, too, might be interested. Mm -hmm. okay. um, there will also be, actually it should be active now, an email address, hrc at northamptonma.gov. Nice yeah, work. That's great. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that going to be forwarded to you? HRC at northamptonma.gov and Lori and I will both have access to it. Oh, does that mean we have to go to it? Like, to the GOV? Yeah. You know what I mean? We also <laughs> yeah, actually have to okay. check it now. I, well, I, I just sometimes they forward it to you. <laughs> ah, true. So, but we have to go yeah, there, I'll so I have to remember to do that. Yeah, I will, I'll let you know the details when I know them. Okay. Um, we can also create a Google form connected to that email address so that when things are collected online or when we get correspondence, it's automatically archived with the city. We don't have to worry about oh, that's saving excellent. things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. How do you access it though? Oh, okay. When it gets archived, what do you mean? Uh, it's saved with all of the other electronic communication that the city saves. You're not talking about like a Google Doc or something that people will do their signatures on. You are no, no, no. The the online version. So you can go online and say, you know, I sign this, and then you can access it so that you can have a running tally of all the names. Cool. That's great. Good work. And the mayor will be there on the tenth, and of course he just needs to know more precisely. Um, what time we are planning to do this and what specifically we're asking him to say any words. Okay. I absolutely can't do it in the morning. So. What day of the week is it? It's a Sunday. Sunday? Yeah. So. I had a vision of us doing it at 4 o'clock. It's a little dark. I had a dream. One. <laughs> <laughs> by that time, 4 o'clock will be fairly dark. People right. will be in their pajamas at 4 one o'clock. Two's my final one. One, two, <laughs> two, two. two. Uh, houses of worship get out around the meet on Sundays are typically getting out around twelve or twelve thirty. So two one. seems good to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Except that you want to catch them before they go home and then have to exactly. Come home. Yeah. Catch them while they're still downtown. You think it should be one? Well, just to follow up on that, it seems to make sense. Is that hard for you? I'm just not sure if I'm going to be able to make it at one. Okay. Some, we're, I, I, I think I might be in a meeting that lasts quite a while, so two could be some more reasonable. Two o'clock? City Hall steps? You could have a picnic and walk around after lunch. <laughs> and we, um, we would expect this to last about an hour. Mm -hmm. It's going to be cold though, so people don't like to hang. Like when we did MLK Day on the stairs, of, it's like people leave after half an hour if it's cold. So okay, yeah. so it's a half hour then. Good. I'm so, cold. half an hour, short and sweet. Okay. So, would you but like it to be 2.30 then? 
No. Okay. Two to two. Two to two thirty. Okay. That's what you can tell the mayor. And now we're locked in because now we have invited guests. But that seems so short. But um, I guess it depends what we want, how much we want to do in that half hour. Right. Do we have to talk about that now or next time? Um, I'm aware that we have 20 minutes okay. left to another agenda. So I that should be next time then? Maybe we should come with ideas though, because I think it yes. should be kind of peppy. You yeah, can always say two to three, and then if it's shorter, it's great. Mm -hmm. So before the next meeting, just to go back a little bit, I will contact all these people. Um, this is that's or or yes, is that yes? yes. And, and you invite them to come. the schools and invite them to come. Right. Yeah, because that's the launch. Yeah, and, and we should get some clergy launch. there. We we should get some clergy who are, you know able to talk. And who's going to notify the media? Got to write a press release. Uh, should we collaborate? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't, I think we could, um, we could write something and bring it to the next meeting. Did we? And will you be inviting the city council members to join us? Yes. I mean, it doesn't have to come from me, but for sure we would invite You're a liaison. I can. Could that please Sure. Would you please? Can you liaise, please? Yes. <laughs> yes, I can. Um, so I thought you might want to be the one to invite them, but I'm very happy to do it. Um, we feel that you represent us adequately. More than adequate. Can, can I ask a question about our next meeting? Yes. Do we, does anybody, could, we are meeting next on a night that, um, I have a work conflict, which I'll I'll skip the work conflict if I if I have to. But I was wondering if, but I think Booker has a problem with Wednesdays. So, did, did anybody here? Could you meet on a Tuesday? The Are you talking about the? We're meeting on the 29th. Yes. And um, the reason Booker has to leave early is because he has a singing group, and the reason he couldn't come tonight is because his singing group starts. Okay. At, yeah. It starts at seven. Okay. And, and and so, I don't know what he's going to do about that, but I do know that to be true because he just told me. But I was wondering how, if, what, am I talking too much? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a perfectly reasonable question. My friends on the same <laughs> I could do Tuesday. I don't know how it is with the meeting rooms or, yeah. or conflicts. I'm not saying forever. Place. I just meant mm -hmm. next month, that's mm -hmm. all. So the 28th instead of the 29th? Yeah, because we're, we're already meeting not in our normal time, because normally we'd meet on the 22nd. Mm -hmm. I am wondering, actually, if we should move that forward instead of backward. Correct. Uh, forward to the 30th? To the, no, to no, the, to the, to the 15th. Oh, the 15th. Yeah. Sure. Um, that, that's fine with me. But that's still the Booker problem. I can't be there just so you know, but that's totally okay. fine. Uh, just because we have to get the We have a lot to do. Yeah. Okay. Did well, we rule out Thursday the 16th? Did we rule it out? We're not usually Thursday people, are we? Yeah. No, this would be a special meeting. But so the thing is, here's the thing. We call could a special meeting whenever we need it. Well, it wouldn't be a special meeting. It would be our November meeting. Oh, you're right. Yes. But we could have a special meeting on the 6th, which is just a few days before, to kind of tie up the loose ends. We may need we may need that, but we need to front load the yeah. tasks. Well, I'm not saying don't meet in November. I'm just saying we should think about yes. whether we want to meet the Wednesday before. Yes. So now we're just trying to figure out when we're going to meet in November. And if you guys don't want to change from the 29th, it's fine. Just uh, if we change it from the 29th to the 15th, can all present be there except Elisa? Okay. So we could yeah, have a quorum, okay. and we will ask the our colleagues who are not with us today as well i will ask so no meeting on the 29th right yes <laughs> and, and so that's at the two, mo until i get confirmation that's two weeks yes so let me get confirmation on the space and the others and the others so make sure we can have form yes so you could send that out to all of us and we could all yes wait in. okay yes and that are you talking about 5 30 usual yes okay Ideally. Okay. And then what day were you suggesting as a potential special meeting, Lori Well, I was suggesting December 6th, which is Wednesday, 
and it's like five days before the launch. That'll be needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will ask folks to hold that in case we end up needing it, which we may. Okay. All right. Okay, let's move on to the agenda item. I ask you all to review news articles, uh, stories that have been reported about the proposal for the cameras on Main Street and the police chief's uh, proposal and come here to discuss them mm -hmm. and whether the commission should take a, any position at this time. So, floor's up. I'm wondering if people had a chance to read the notes that I sent you from the a public comment because that was I think when um, last meeting Karen kind of we added it on at the last minute and I didn't kind of I just told people the timeline of how things had unfolded but not so much kind of the content and the philosophical and kind of social analysis and reasons why um, you know there's been really strong opposition to the proposal to install the camera so I wanted to um, share with you at least my perspective, and clearly, you know, it's just my perspective, but um, a lot of the public comment that's come up, as um, Amy mentioned in our public comment, has been along similar lines of concerns about um, race and class and how people, marginalized people, are going to be targeted more um, than others and how. Uh, surveillance cameras that feed directly into a police department have a pretty chilling effect in communities. There are even, there's even research that shows um, that downtown life is deeply affected by um, people's knowledge that there are surveillance cameras that get fed into police departments. Um, so there are all kinds of concerns um, about civil liberties, you know, who's gonna have access, as Amy said, um, we cannot protect the footage from the FBI. The FBI would seek it and could turn it over to ICE. Except um, that it's going to be deleted. She, it's it's going to be deleted. They, what we're told with this administration, with this police chief, is that they will keep it for three weeks. Um, within that three weeks, it could be requested and turned over. We don't know in subsequent administrations how that would be handled. Once the cameras are in place, um, unless we write very clear policy, which the city council can't do, it would have to be an executive order from the mayor's office and you don't know who the next mayor is gonna be. I mean, there are just a lot of questions about how responsibly um, it would be managed in the future. And currently. Well, I want to say, um, I really appreciated everything you said. I have. Um, very um, similar concerns. Um, I, I I guess some of mine just start from the fact that on the whole, in comparison with much of the rest of the world, this is a very law-abiding place. And this feels like um, extremely um, over-the-top. Lot of inherent problems in terms of civil rights. Um, so I, I very much support what you have to say. Did, did you read the letter? Yes. I mean, I've read quite a lot. I mean, I've read quite a lot. Mm -hmm. I, that's where I come down to. We, I'm not sure which letter. I the letter Elisa sent today? Uh, the one that Elisa wrote? Yeah. Yeah. That's it's just the two public comments that I've made, yeah. Yeah. or comments I've made in city council meetings. Well, I, I really have some serious problems with it. I feel like that it is trashing of our police department in a way that doesn't seem accurate or fair to me. And um, I, um, you know, I think this is a, a subject that people can disagree about. And if you are in favor of it, it doesn't mean you 
are racist. <laughs> I think that um, I just feel like it's trashing our police department in a way that doesn't seem fair to me. I mean, and I know that they do a lot of progressive things. They just, they got 100% trained recently in this fair and impartial policing. Jody sent every single police officer to that. Prior to that, she did an anti-bias training. She brought people in from a place in Brattleboro, school in Brattleboro. Yeah, and she felt like that wasn't quite enough, so she badgered the DA's office until we did this FIP training, and um, there were 11 of them, and every single police officer went. They do the DART program, which is reaching out to people who have overdosed, just talk to them about resources. Um, they are at the table at Hampshire Hope meetings. Um, I've been to many protests where I see the police, and they are a gentle presence. I, I, I don't think they are the militarized police that you're talking about in this, this letter that you wrote. And um, I'm not sure how, I mean, I feel a little uncomfortable with um, surveillance cameras, but I just think that this tone and the tone of this, this uh, community discussion has been so polarizing and so, um, I mean, the people who work for the Northampton Police Department, many of them live in Northampton. Um, and I just don't think it's right to, you know, paint them in this brush that they're militaristic. I just don't think it's, tr it's accurate. And um, I, I would not be able to support um, taking a stand on it. It just doesn't feel comfortable to me. It feels divisive. Taking any stand at all. I mean, I hear what you're saying about the police department, and I've had, you know, mostly similar, really similar experiences. I still am very concerned. About yeah. Well, these cameras. Yeah. I mean, I. I mean to say we'd have to. I, well, I didn't think you were suggesting that that would be the letter we would send. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. I mean, and like I said, it's my that's my personal comments. It wasn't a letter. It was just my comments at city council meetings. I am not asking anyone to endorse those comments. I just wanted to give you some background. Right. Um, so I guess the stance that we're talking about taking would be um, to say, to decide whether or not the commission wants to kind of bolster or support the um, resolution and the ordinance that the city council has put forward. And I don't know why I didn't think of this, but I didn't actually send you the language of the resolution. Um, we can look at it now, or we can table this and look at it, and you guys can look at it later. But it's, um, the resolution was voted on first vote at the last meeting. The, it's, it was um, seven to two, seven people in support of the resolution saying that we don't support the idea of um, cameras in our downtown, councilors Bidwell and Murphy were the two dissenting voices who um, feel like it's fine to install the cameras. Um, and the ordinance essentially prohibits cameras from being installed in our downtown bus business district um, with many exceptions. Uh, cameras that already exist won't be taken down. Um, it's okay to keep them in parking garages at the police station. Um, so it's not, um, it's not kind of a broad ban of cameras, really. So that's what we're talking about, not my <coughs> personal public comment. I haven't done my homework, and so I, I don't know what we're, we're talking about, because as I'm hearing you list out the exceptions, I guess I need to know what the concrete proposal was, where, where exactly are, is the police department saying that, that it's necessary to put, or they would like to put cameras? Like, what corner do we have that level of detail? Yes. So I guess I need to do some homework, so I apologize. I would need to um, table it and talk about it next time would be my preference. It's also partly because it's late and I'm not on my best foot. The only, I mean, I think that's absolutely fine if people don't feel like they want to um, make a decision tonight, but uh, depending on when the next meeting is, it might be after 
it will definitely be after the resolution has its second vote, but it may even be after the, um, the ordinance goes to vote. So we'll kind of miss that window of opportunity if uh, people do want to weigh in in some way. And I don't, well, we, we can talk another time, but I, it was not my intention in my comments to trash the police. Um, I talked about some, um, generally about police and increasing militarization. I talked about my concern about the context um, within which the cameras have been proposed, which is you know requesting riot gear, a panhandling task force by the mayor. Those are things that seem to me to be part of a bigger picture of what um, some plans are for our downtown and how we interact with the community that lives downtown. Well, I just don't see it that way. I, mean, I think there's been this discussion for decades about panhandling and how, you know, the, how to be fair to the panhandlers and fair to the business and fair to people who shop there. And I think that's an ongoing conversation and I don't think it's anything new. Um, but I, I've seen the police interact with the panhandlers and I think that the, our, the police are extremely sensitive. Um, and I mean, I, this says punishment creep has made its way into even our local policing efforts. I don't know what that means. I mean, I just don't see it. I, I spent a lot of time with the police department because we had 11 of those trainings and I, I just think they're really trying to be community-based police officers. I can say from my experience living in low socioeconomic status, I have not had maybe a handful of good experiences, mainly negative ones within the police department. Um, homeless man passing out on the bench near our house, they come and mock him and imitate him and are laughing at his behavior. Calling them because there are people from local neighborhoods coming and playing basketball at 3 a.m. Cops show up play basketball with the kids instead of addressing the problem and assisting us. Um, a break-in at my house where they didn't offer any assistance. They came to the house, no, saw that there was a break-in, there was indication of somebody having been in the house, but because they didn't see anybody there, didn't really give extra measures or support or help or have somebody um, located near the house. It was my, I was by myself and my brother with special needs. They didn't assist us in any other way except leaving. I'm sure that if my family had more money and we did not live at 34 Michael Mann, a very well-known address by the police department, that they definitely would have offered us a lot more support and help. Um, stopping my mom one time, pulling her over as part of a training demonstration, but then following her car for several miles all the way into our neighborhood and then going back. Things like that. So I definitely don't think that it means that they're all bad or all good. You know, each time that I have an experience with the Northampton Police Department, I always take it as that one experience and that one account. And so I'm not looking at it as they're all negative or they're all, but at the same time, I think portraying them as being very positive just because they've gone through these trainings. People can go through trainings, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to come across in a always positive way and just explain like my perspective and how it's been for me um definitely the way that i've been treated living in a neighborhood where the police frequent a lot because of a lot of the issues that happen there and just seeing the treatment of people within our neighborhood especially that of my mom when she speaks with an accent in comparison to how they speak to me when i don't speak with an accent. so i think there are some biases there doesn't mean they're all negative they're all bad my boyfriend's a firefighter he's friends with many of them so i understand the dynamics but at the same time i can also see how this can be extremely harmful to those who are living in Northampton and are going to be there, you know, more at nighttime on the cameras, things like that. I don't expect that the police department would be looking at those surveillance cameras and maybe approaching or treating those people with the most respect um, from what I've witnessed and what I've encountered. So for me, I would be in support of being against the cameras downtown, mainly for that reason and just because of my experience. But I think it varies. It really depends on who you are in Northampton and which avenues you interact and see the police department in. Thank you. So I'm, I'm not I'm not able to say anything. I'm else. sorry, no. But you're welcome to approach any of us after the meeting. Um, I also want to note that um, in an article, in one of the articles, there um, is expressed, I'm looking for the quote here, um, that the police chief is interested in working with um, a committee to talk about how the implementation might happen if this is pr approved 
and it has suggested not focusing on sidewalks or pedestrians and focusing instead on major downtown traffic intersections. So, okay. So is this for cars? Is this for like moving? Is this for vehicles? No. My impression is it wasn't. Familiar. Well, what happened was there was so much outcry. Originally, it was going to be mounted on buildings to look at the sidewalks, and there was so much outcry right at the get-go that, that they shifted, um, the chief shifted the idea that it would focus, the cameras would focus on the major intersections in downtown so that it could be used not as a deterrent to crime, but as an apprehension tool so people are making a getaway by you know, running across an intersection or driving a car away from the scene of a crime, they would be able to capture those. So that was kind of a downgrading of the surveillance aspect of people sitting on the streets and, you know, maybe panhandling or things of that nature. So that was kind of a way that she reshaped it in response to the public um, outcry, essentially. Can I make one more point? Yes. I just want to respond to you, Narelle, that I don't sure. doubt any of your those experiences you you mentioned at all. I wasn't saying that um, they took these trainings, therefore they're perfect, but more like I think the chief sees a problem and she's trying to get people trained up. She sees it as, as an ongoing issue. So. No, I agree. I do see it being a benefit that they're taking these trainings. And that's why I say each situation I take with each, per each time I interact with the police department, I don't take it as all negative, all bad. It's my personal interaction with each individual time and I try to view it in that way because if I come up with a bias, then it's probably not going to end in a positive way. So it is refreshing to hear that they are doing those things. Um, at the same time, just because of my personal experiences with them, I think I would have to see a bit more history of those trainings coming into play and maybe seeing a shift in how they are interacting with people in my community to be able to say, oh yeah, so I think that they could definitely handle that in a responsible manner in a manner that I would be comfortable or trusting or willing of. Um, so I think that's more of where I was coming from, but I do appreciate seeing your perspective mm -hmm. as well. You know, this kind of dialogue reminds me of how um, last year or whenever it was, a year and a half ago, we talked about uh, the Human Rights Commission um, conducting a series of listening sessions with marginalized communities. And, and I think that that, especially for a predominantly white commission, that's an important thing that we need to think about for the future because I totally respect you and I know that you've done a lot of work with the police department and um, have seen some of the better sides, but I, I, I've just, I've had enough conversations with people from marginalized communities in this city to, you know, I've heard over and over again and there have been things in the news, there's a recent situation that, you know, a lot of people question, but a lot of people don't with Eric Matlock on the stairs of City Hall. There's the Jonas Correa incident. Um, but then there are the, these more micro incidents that happen all the time to people of color in, and poor people and illicit drug using people in this city. And when you hear their perspective, it is very different than what what I as a white person might see that the cops doing. And so I just think it's really important that we not be solipsistic in how we look at this and really think about how marginalized people are affected by things like cameras. I don't so know that's the place that I'm coming from. Um, just that your world is the whole world kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, that sounds harsh that way, but just to, you know, to get outside of our own um, experiences and to really hear firsthand from people who experience things in a very different way. I think we hear stories more consistent with the kind of stories that they're always sharing. So we're not, we're not really um, here nor there, I suppose, with this conversation, but I appreciate that we're happy. I hear no consensus yet, but I hear a lively conversation and some uh, expression to do more homework, and so I'm not comfortable with the, the proposal at this moment. But we'll, we will keep apprised of what the council does this week and make sure it is on the agenda for our next meeting. Which is likely to be the 15th. Likely to so be just two weeks. Yes. But you'll let us know. I will soon know. <laughs> Any new business? 
Any word on the uh, search for another member? No, if you have any people that you think would be good on the commission, do recommend there's an online form that they can fill out. Okay. Yeah, that would be good. Then we would sweat it less. Yes. <laughs> yes. One and we're down to one male member of the commission with Booker's? No, two. two. Joel and Okay, Joel and Booker. Is Brian gone? Okay, I saw his name on the website, so I wasn't sure what happened with that. Yeah, he hasn't, it's been almost a year. He so. can't get his name off the website. <laughs> yeah, I'll ask him to take care of it. We have a new person uh, in the main office, too, so. I'll make sure that gets taken off. Just in thinking about a new member too, Neral's really the only one here that isn't what forty five or old. <laughs> Is that does that sound right? Yeah, it would be nice. Mm -hmm. Just to think about, yeah. You know, I mean I know that we don't get to choose, but just in talking to the mayor about it, I think that's an important factor. I would entertain so, a motion. I move that we adjourn. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I didn't.